Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good day. Uh, so this is going to be the uh, third lecture. Uh, this is actually the uh, continuity from the previous second lecture, and it should be combined in the same uh, lecture time. So today we are going to learn more about the CPU. Uh, as previously on the last slides, uh, we are uh, learning. We learn about the memory. Now we are going back to the CPU. Uh, then we are going to look at that what is inside the CPU, the, the terminology and uh, what are the terms being used. Alright, so uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to uh, emphasize on uh, what is a software model term. This is a software model, it's a term. So you need to, to understand what is uh, the software modeling for 68K. And then uh, you are going to differentiate the registers which is available in the 68k so the registers is under the software modeling chapter and the last one you are going to define the functions of the registers in uh, microprocessors in 68k okay so let's move on uh, the the introduction over here uh, just just uh, just showing that uh, why why we choose 68k uh, this is very old time already now it's 2021 uh, I think around nearly 50 years or 40 years that uh, 68k had been uh, uh, introduced and uh, this is uh, exactly what is the uh, benefits or the pro uh, at the particular time so this is uh, uh, being the basic uh, fundamental subjects or the control uh, for the microcontroller and the microprocessor is actually a basic where you need to learn about the programming wise and the language other than C++ okay so just as uh, just I'll move on uh, the example of microprocessor application this one uh, this is very old version things uh, I don't think that you can still find these things uh, this is uh, all games whatever all PCs and all this uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, this is very old stuff, and uh, now we don't see it anymore. It has it's a, it's a lots of improvements on this uh, equipment. Okay, now we are looking on the term of software modeling. So, what is software modeling? Okay, software modeling is uh, the registers which are referred to for the microcontroller microprocessor 68k so i'm going to remove mc over here 68k microprocessor so the registers you still remember that i mean i taught you, taught you guys about the cache registers are some so the registers is a, a, a place where you want to store but the registers is inside the cpu if you can remember that there are three components uh, for the cpu which is the first one is the register here the second one is arithmetic logic unit and the last one is control unit. So you remember that for the CPU, there are three components inside there. This is the CPU, which is different from the micro con microcomputer system, right? Microcomputer system also have three. This is more like RAM, the CPU, and the I/O. Whereas in a CPU, you have another three elements, which is which are the registers, ALU, and the control unit. So this is the registers inside the CPU. So you have to remember all the time when I talk about registers, the registers is inside the CPU, not outside. The outside is going to be your memory location. The memory is the one that we're going to play around outside the CPU. Okay. So the the the, the functions of the uh, components inside CPU, the registers is to store temporary data. And the ALU is the place where the data is processed. This is where you have the uh, add minus uh, subtraction or multiplications being uh, executed. And the last one is control unit, is, which is the control of the unit's operation by giving the control signals and the timing. This is related more on the timing process, uh, on, the, on the execution process and the controlling process. Okay, so in this page, uh, we are talking about the software modeling. So this is a new term for you. So what is software modeling? Software modeling are the registers, the registers 
referred to 68k so the registers inside 68k are called the software modeling software modeling in other words the software modeling is what can be seen on the software programming which is on chip user variable this is the software that you got you are going to learn later next week okay i'm going to post a video how to take uh, how to install all these things and then we're going to learn about how to use this one so it means that by looking by looking just by your eyes looking by your, using your eyes you cannot see the registers you can see only what is the cpu looks like but the software modeling only can be seen if you are using the simulator then you can look at the registers that is the software modeling for 68k that's the new term for this one okay so what are the registers inside the cpu so let's look at that and these are the registers they are how many of them there are five types of register so do not confuse this one and the outside of the cpu so i'm going to make it clear the comparison between this one and the outside especially on the pins name so if you can remember that last time when I teach you guys about the pins this one you remember that you have the D pins which is from D0 to D15 and you have your A0 maybe A, A1 to A23 then you have the A0 A0 is something LDS something this is uh, the address pin the D data pin is uh, at 16 bits of uh, 16 pins and this is 24 pins which are different because this is outside so forget the one first look at what is inside the cpu so in cpu there are five types of register one they call it data registers data registers second one they call it address registers third one they call it stack pointer uh, so a step pointer yes this is a step pointer right then you have the program counter and the last one you have the status register okay uh, so there are five of them but we're going to look at one by one up to maybe uh, the status register then we are done for for today's lecture the name in register data register you can see that the name is nearly the same with the outside so do not uh, confuse with the outside so we are going to look at the inside the names are the same but the functions are different so that's the case when i talk about register i'm going to talk about what is inside the cpu if i do not talk about the register means i may probably want to say about the uh, pins outside which is the pins on the cpu okay data register how many of them inside the register and how many of them inside cpu so there are eight of them they call it from d0 to d7 which is around eight eight data registers same goes uh, to address register which is uh, address this is a0 to a6 so we have seven only okay then you have the stack pointer stack pointer we have two problem counter we have one status register we have one and you can see that the difference on the size for data registers the size will be 32 bit in size same goes to address register and stack pointer same goes to point counter but status register only have 16 bit in size so the function what's the function this is uh, the difference uh, and the functions of the registers so data register it stores the data you can put the data to 8 bit or 16 bit or 32 bit one shot whereas for address register it will stores only up to 16 or 32 bit pointers which are the addresses so this is related back to the 24 pins i'm going to talk about that one later that's why you have 16 and 32 this is how we want to address address the memory okay you can address addressing modes so then you have the stack pointer the stack pointer is related to the address this one okay
okay, related because but they, they call it a stack pointer, which is store a pointer to a group of data known as the stack, also known as A7 because this one A0 to A6 plus A7, right? So there are two stack pointer, they call it USP and SSP. So this is going to be uh, the A7 inside the CPU, okay? This is going to be a topic, one topic before you go for the mid break. Then you have the point counter. Okay, the function is to contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched and execute. So this is uh, quite a big topic, but uh, we are not going to touch this one. So this is going to be uh, the, the function first before we proceed for the uh, applications on it. Okay, and the last one is a status register, which is contain the information on the result on the last instructions consists of the system byte and the condition code registers. This is also another big topic which is going to be covered in a few lectures. So we're going to talk about this one first data address, data registers and address registers. So how we are going to look at inside the CPU. So this is how the data register, then the address register, this is data register, this is address register. You can see that the size is from 0 to 32. 0 to 31 means that it's 32 bit in size. So you can see that this is the size. And will be binary numbers only, which is 1010. 0, 0. If I say up to 32 bit, means that it's going to be a binary numbers. Okay, same goes to address register. It also has around 32 bit in size. And the numbering will be A0 to A6. And there are two stack pointer over here, which is A7. Okay. And then we have the point counter, also 32 bit. And the size for the status register is only 16 bit. Okay, this is what is inside your CPU. Okay, this is the function. And this is how it works how you can see it later in your IDE 68K. So that's why they call it software modeling. You cannot see by your eyes, you cannot see by, by using your eyes, you can see it if you run the simulator IDE 68K. All right. So this is inside the CPU. So I keep on uh, emphasize that all the registers are inside your CPU. Whereas the CPU is physically here, you can see that the pins are related to it. So this pin, the names of the pins, for example, again, I'm going to repeat this one. The pin for D0 to D15 is not the same like this one. It's not the same. Okay, we are going to talk. This is a pins not related to the names of the registers. Data registers, these are the names. D0 to D7. Same goes to address register from A0 to A6 over here. Okay, so this is, uh, you're going to look away from D0 to D6. Alright, so it is not the same. I keep on repeating this. Eh? And also for A0, you have A0 here up to A7. Okay, up to A7 here. A7, it can be either one because it has two. This is address register still is going to be a 32 bit in size. This is how the size is look like okay then you have the point counter you have the status register so same goes to address a0 to a6 are not the same with this one a0 or a1 to a23 you can you have to understand that these are the names of the pins for the cpu which is the leg of the cpu this is going to be the address sending up to to the outside world to go to the memory locations where it wants to go accordingly to the address generated over here and that address is coming from the address register same goes to data here we have d0 to d15 right so here you can see that you have a 32 bit you can send 8 or maybe 16 or 32 which means that you can send 8 data from d0 to d7 directly out then you can send another one 0 to 16 0 to 15 you can use d1 d0 to d15 one shot or you want to send the whole data inside this data register you can do it twice because this is only 16 pins you're going to send the first one here send out and then you are going to send this one out using the same pins so this is like your 
pin like your bus your transportation is going up because this is connected uh, to the memory you can send up to the memory the data the data is inside here that's why they call it here as a storage okay this is to store the pointer which is the address this is to store the data register data which is under data register okay clearly eh? so again by looking at the eyes this is what you see this is what you can see and this is not we are going to look at it in the id68 key which is different okay okay how it works now the analogy eh? if you want to uh, send a data out to address uh, this is you can see that this one i'm going to refer this one uh, let's say for example this one is your memory this is your memory different address okay you have different address so remember that uh, on the first uh, on the second chapter right when you draw the memory you can draw like this this is dollar sign zero 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 dollar sign zero 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 one and the last one is dollar sign f f f f f only six digit eh? because of 24 pins only okay so you can uh, imagine that each of these component is one of the memory inside here potentially over here so the cpu can send a data inside the data register and using the address stored in the address register send out to the address address bus and you will locate the address and later you will put the data at that address it's up to you, you want to take the data out or you want to read or you want to erase so this is the analogy how you can send or write read the data from the cpu to memory by using data bus and address bus and the control bus is going to control those operations okay so example here bring data this data okay to somewhere else you can push over there okay this is the analogy eh? this is another one i'm going to show you how it works with the memory now you have your cpu over here you have the data registers and address registers here this is step pointer related to address register then you have problem counter and then you have the status register okay look at this one first d0 to d15 and then you have uh you have uh this one this is data register uh address register step pointer which is related problem counter then you can see that this is the pins for the address register pins address register okay so address is this one data register is this one this is data inside here so you have the memory see remember that when we draw this one right we have the even sections and we have the odd sections this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 blah blah blah, blah. up to the end is f f f f f e and the last one is f f f f f f so remember that last time is uh, this is one 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 if you times 4 times 6 4 times 6 is equivalent to 24 so 24 bits related to this one related to the uh, address pins over here uh, so what else I'm, I'm going to show you guys later in the IDC AK how it works eh? one by one so just to understand that uh, the data registers inside your CPU the names of it are not the same with the pins on the CPU which is on the leg outside here even though the names are the same okay D0 to D15 you can see D0 to D7 then you have D8 up to D15 but they are not the same uh, uh, compared to the one inside the CPU which they are called register okay okay that's the first thing the next one we are going to learn about the terminology used in the operation Okay, the first one they call it bytes. The second, the second one they call it word, and the third one they call it long word. So, what are the difference on this term, which is the data types? Eh? Data types is how do you want to proceed with the operation? Is it in byte? Is it in word? Or is it in long word? When you do the programming, you have to clearly state what types of uh, data types that you want to use. Okay, the first one is bytes. Okay, bytes is this one. This is a uh, eight bit in size. So bit is different. Eh? Bit is one bit, two bit is different. That is the one that we talk about the uh, legs of the CPU. Then you have the byte. So one byte is equivalent to eight bit size. This is the one. 
then you have the word word means the size will be 16 bits and then the third one you have they call it the long word the long word is the whole 32 bits in size that's why if you can go back to this uh, particular register right you can play around with word byte and long word so for example if you want to play with the word size you are going to play only for this word only uh, this uh, this particular area whereas if you want to play with the word size you are going to play with this particular area and then for the long word you are going to play for the whole registers and you can take up or read and send to the memory okay so this is just now we have the byte byte is in this one and then you have the word and the last one you have the long word okay okay next one we move on so again now we go back to the data register components and what are the functions of it okay let's look at the uh, the slides over here data register which is the name conventions is dn n can be from 0 to uh, sorry, 0 to 7 so n can be from 0 to n okay <coughs> the function is to store the data that will be processed by processes by the ALU okay only data is stored that's why they call it data register only data okay so you cannot save the memory or the pointer address location to this data register because it has its own address registers to be safe on the informations okay only data is stored whereas the program written in binary is safe in the memory map memory rack sorry <coughs> sorry so what is this okay the concept is like this when you write a program right you write a program right and then you compile it if you can remember that in your C++ here you to compile it because you have to <coughs> get the hex file to be executed so this is the hex file containing the program in binary and it will be saved to the memory <coughs> okay the program written that's fine not it will not save inside the data registers it will be saved <coughs> in the memory okay so each con each d0 to d7 will contains uh, 32 bit in size and it has eight data registers which is d0 to 7 it can be 32 bit long word 16 bit word and 8 bit byte so this is the one that uh, i have in the slides before you have the uh, uh the long word the word okay the long word will be the whole thing the word will be half of it and the byte <coughs> will be only 8 bit so what is LSB and MSB? So I just want to make it clear. Okay, LSB is least significant bit. Significant bit. And MSB is most significant bit. Uh, what is this? Eh? Okay, uh, I'm just out from this topic for a while. I'll just make sure that you understand what is MSB and LSB. Okay. For for a number in binary uh, it has two sections one is called lsb which is the the last one or the most right one <coughs> and the most significant bit is the number that is on the most left on the binary numbers so let's try to look at this one this is maybe i just want to uh, have a decimal 10 decimal right 10 decimal <coughs> in binary can be like this one zero one zero you have to go back to this one eh? uh, you have to learn back uh, or you have to do revisions on the binary numbers hexa and decimal so this is the binary numbers equivalent to 10 decimal so in this binary numbers the last one they call it this one the least significant bit 
which is the smallest bit, right? You can see that this is the smallest one, whereas this is the highest one, this is the most significant bit. So if <coughs> the number changing in a small number, this one will be changing, right? So let's say uh, only one or two uh, uh, value will be changed, so this is going to be one zero. The rest is not yet changed because it's a small, more significant, it's a higher value. So that's why they call it most and the least. So this is what the definition of LSB and MSB between uh, the long word, the word, and the byte. So you can see that it depends on the size of the bit, uh, on, on the on the data type. Sorry. <coughs> okay. So let's move on. Then you have the data registers. Uh, sorry, address registers. The function is to store the information for the address of the location inside the memory. Okay. The function is to store the information for address location <coughs> for the data inside the memory. So you have a data, as I just now, you want to send to the memory location. You want to send this data to this area location and this address location have address. And the address register is the one going to save this one and this is going to be referred for the data to be put over there. So this is the call it another one as a pointer. Also at the address. <coughs> There's the terms, eh? pointer and address. So data is inside data register. Address will be inside address register. Okay. So the address information is referred uh, to the address located at the memory. It's also known as a pointer, which is A7. A7, we're going to learn this one later. This is about a stack pointer. Eh? It consists of seven registers, A0 to A6. Uh, this is, again, 32-bit. Byte operation, same one, like 16. Operation, sorry, byte operation is not allowed. Okay, this is not allowed operation in uh, address register due to the 24 bits which is a pin says now this is related data i'm going to teach you guys how and then it allows only words operation and long word and this is going to be the rules of it when you want to execute this one okay if the word it says there will be a, this is the rules i'm going to teach you once you look at the id 68k <coughs> sorry uh, yeah, this is going to be in the IDC CK for you guys to, to, to refer more and understand that. And then uh, this is about related stack pointer. There will be a, a, a topic for this one. Full topic. Let's move on. Point counter. Okay, point counter is going to be, I just want to give you definitions over here. Then you are going to look it later next week on the uh, 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 pro, uh, on the IDC CK. So what is it? So it's a 32 bits in size and the function is to point the next address for the instructions to be executed. So when you have a program, the point counter is the one, is a process for you to look at and understand how uh, the, the, the process will move. And this is the address is pointing for the execution wise. Okay, uh, it's okay this one. I just want to make sure that uh, you guys understand the name first. Then, you have the status register. This is register, it's only uh, 15 bits. 16 bits, sorry, 16 bit size. So you have this one. And user byte, this is when I'm going to use this. We are going to use this one. And this is going to be a part of uh, another lecture. Okay. So uh, I'm going to proceed. Not this one. Uh, I'm going to proceed only for. I'm going to end uh, the 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 lecture up to this one only. So we're going to have the assessment for you to to revise and uh, to submit uh, by today. Okay. Thank you very much.